Prison time for some local men convicted on drug distribution charges. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, a 32-year-old Scottsdale man arrested following a February Wing Drug Task Force investigation has agreed to a plea deal to avoid standing trial. Court records say that a CI bought 15 fentanyl pills from Joshua Brown for $300 during a controlled buy and was charged with a Class 1D felony count of distribution of a controlled substance within 1,000 feet of a school or playground. Last week in district court, Brown agreed to plead no contest to the charge, and in exchange for his plea, charges in two separate district court cases will be dismissed. Last Wednesday, District Judge Leo Dobrovoni sentenced Brown to the mandatory minimum of three years in prison, but Brown did receive credit for 114 days for time already served. Sticking with the courts now, as a Gehring man caught with roughly three quarters of an ounce of methamphetamine has been sentenced. Back in October, Scott's Bluff officers made contact with 34-year-old John Dunn, in which they found the aforementioned meth, a digital scale, and a knife. Last week in district court, he too was sentenced to a mandatory minimum of three years imprisonment on a Class 1D felony conviction of possession of meth 10 to 27 grams. Dunn did receive credit for 100 days already served. And area visitors and residents can enjoy a unique dining experience at five restaurants in Gehring and Scottsbluff as Restaurant Week 21 gets underway. Running through this coming Sunday, the eateries are a pre-fixed meal at price points of $21, $31, and $41 per person, giving patrons options to fit their budget. Gehring Visitors Bureau Director Carla Needon Streak says that the chefs at each restaurant are going all out and in some cases offering new entrees. From a dining perspective, if you're dining during restaurant week, you can, you're going to have an, a culinary experience that you never had before. And also from the restaurants and the chef standpoint, it's an opportunity to put some new items out there on a prefix menu and see how they go with, with locals and residents in the area that are dining out. In addition, diners can register for prizes donated by the Western Nebraska Pioneers, the Scottsdale County Fair, and the Midwest Theater. In Gehring, Melt Fondue, and the Monument Grill will participate, joined by Scottsdale's counterparts of the Flyover Brewery, the Powerhouse Social, and Sweet V's, with menus available online at visitscottsdale.com. We'll have more news right after this. The journey of a dream becoming reality. When we're young, a dream develops into a passion. That passion continues to manifest and grows as you do. It becomes all you want to do and all you want to be. It gives you direction. It drives you. Then your dream has become a reality. When that dream is ready to be reality, Platte Valley Bank will be with you every step of the way. Welcome to the snow show, boys and girls. Today we'll be learning about safe snow tips. Yay! Tip number one. When scooping the sidewalk, always deposit the snow on your lawn and gardens. Not only is it environmentally safe, it keeps our streets and gutters clear. Tip number two. Where there's ice on the ground, use salt only as a last resort. Use no salt de-icers, which are less harmful to plants, animals, and your concrete. Be safe around snow and ice. The show is brought to you today by Tri-State Water. Welcome back. Three Panhandle airports are among a list of 21 that will receive a round of federal funding according to a joint announcement from Nebraska's two U.S. Senators yesterday. The Nebraska Department of Transportation will receive a total of $15.3 million for disbursements, which will be used to enhance and maintain existing infrastructure. Panhandle airports impacted by the funding are Shadron Municipal Airport with just over $350,000 and Sydney Municipal Airport receiving $144,000, with $48,000 going to the airport in Rushville. Both Senators Fisher and Ricketts say they hope the money helps ensure accessibility for travel, improve safety, and support the continued growth of communities across our state. 
And the Nebraska Legislature's Education Committee heard testimony yesterday on a bill that would limit when school districts and educational service units could place bond issues before voters. LB 878, sponsored by Bellevue Senator Rick Holdcroft, would force all such bond issues to go before voters during statewide general elections held in even-numbered years. Nicole Fox with the Platt Institute testified in favor of the bill, saying it was proper because special elections have such a low voter turnout. Special elections generally take place in the shadows of the news cycle. And because of this, both the media and the general public tend to overlook these elections. General elections are more desirable because we want a broader spectrum of representation as well as for voters to be well informed on each side of an issue so they can make well informed decisions. Kyle Fisher with the Nebraska Association of School Boards told the committee that the bill would remove local control from the boards trying to be flexible and cost effective. The choice to ask voters to weigh in on a bond issue is the results of months of open deliberation at board meetings, community meetings, and other avenues of community input. Potentially delaying until a general election would delay a project that has been researched, communicated, and vetted. Th these delays cost more money. Supporters of the measure also contended that the cost per voter for special elections is often three to four times higher than that of a statewide general election held every November. This is KNEB.TV weather from the KNEB Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. Very clear and quiet across the region tonight. Not much happening. Temps only falling into the 30s by sunrise tomorrow. 62 yesterday after a morning low of 26. We missed a record by just 5. 20 degrees above normal. Nothing in the rain gauge. We're going to end the month here uh, right about normal at 3,700. So you should have 3,800s. And about normal for snowfall and four and a half below normal for the year in the season. We were well into the 60s today, flirted with record highs across the area today. And uh, another dry day. That's going to change, though, as we get later on into the weekend. And still looking out, 8, 14 days, it still looks like temps are going to be warm and uh, precip above normal. But as we go through this week, well, chances of precip get pretty good. Saturday, Saturday night, starting as early as Friday night into Sunday, Sunday night, and then again next Wednesday late in the day. So some decent shots of getting some moisture out there. Winds are going to stay fairly calm, uh, maybe a bit gusty at times Friday. That's about it. Look at these temperatures right now. 40s and 50s out there. Gorgeous. Light winds. No issues to be concerned about. No wind chills to be concerned about either. Getting out the door tomorrow? Well, we're going to be in the 30s to start the day, 40s before lunch, in the 50s by lunchtime. We'll peak out in the low 60s tomorrow afternoon. Future cast is quiet. There's a few clouds, mainly to the south. They'll stream across the north overnight into early tomorrow. Then tomorrow afternoon, a few showers possible to our east. That's about it. And then Friday, we reset and do it again. We'll start to bring better chances of rain in here by late Friday. Lows tonight in the 20s to near 30. Highs tomorrow, 50s to near 60. Another very nice day. Precip's going to be very light over the next couple of days. Just a, a trace at most. Clear skies tonight and a low down around 32 tomorrow. It's going to be partly cloudy. Highs into the low 60s. Our seven-day forecast, we fall back into the 50s on Friday with some late day showers there on Groundhog Day. Good chances of rain Saturday and into Sunday. Could see some mixture of some sleet or freezing rain at times. Temps fall into the 40s. And then as you look at uh, next week, we bounce back into the 50s and bring another chance of rain or snow in by Wednesday.
this week's featured pet of the week, we meet Tig, a seven-year-old domestic short hair that's been at the Humane Society for several weeks now. Staff say he's one of a kind and loves to cuddle up with you. He's spent the last four years with his partner in crime, Petey, who's a four-year-old domestic long hair, and the goal of the Humane Society is to keep the two together. Their adoption cost is $50 each, and that includes all vaccinations and microtripping. To meet these cats or any animals available for adoption, you can head on over to the Panhandle Humane Society during normal business hours. This isn't just a beautiful hospital. It's the home to exceptional patient care. This is where specialty clinics meet your needs. This is where a friendly smile, a warm hand, and an empathetic ear exist to care for you. This is us. Fox Butte General Hospital. Great things are happening here. Welcome to Kelly's Liquor, your liquor cabinet. Whether you're a wine enthusiast, a whiskey sommelier, a tequila connoisseur, or you just love your beer, Kelly's has the best selection of what you're looking for. Family owned and operated since 1946 and right on 27th Street in Scotts Bluff. Come see us today at Kelly's Liquor, your liquor cabinet. And remember to be a good neighbor. Don't drink and drive. Kelly's Liquor, West 27th Street in Scotts Bluff. Let's take a look at your midweek community calendar brought to you by Riverstone Bank. The community calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. We're local and we love our community. Panhandle Trails Intercity Public Transit, based in Alliance, Nebraska, is the only intercity bus serving Nebraska Panhandle communities and Pine Ridge, South Dakota. Panhandle Trails operates a regularly scheduled bus service, assisting you in making connections with Greyhound Bus Partners, regional airports, healthcare, employment and education opportunities, shopping, family, friends, and more. Panhandle Trails serves the general public of all ages and offers accessible transportation for those with special mobility needs. Let Panhandle Trails help you make your connection. Call 308-761-8747. At Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. 
We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether you are just starting the business you have always imagined or looking to grow your existing one, we have a business loan to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. And finally tonight, the phone lines have stopped ringing, and that means the 2024 United Way of Western Nebraska Radiothon is officially in the books. On Thursday, Rural Radio and Eagle Broadcasting aired testimonials of the dozen-plus agencies that the United Way serves. Throughout the day, volunteers manned the phones to take pledges to help the United Way meet their campaign fundraising goal. Executive Director Karen Benzel says that when all was said and done, more than $6,200 was raised during this year's Radiothon, putting them at 90% of their fundraising goal of $400,000. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.